What is going on guys, Trader Kaz here. Wanted to record a trade review as well as a market update video. This is one of the less fun trade reviews. Um, I was stopped out of this trade, but I think those are some of the important ones that we wanna learn from and I'm not gonna shy away from being wrong because as a trader, I mean, you're just, you're gonna be wrong a lot. <laughs> if you're, if you say you're never wrong, then you're just lying, um, but yeah, so we'll take a look at Bitcoin, talk about the trade I took, why I took it, um, if I would take it again, or what I could do differently, or whatever. Um, I think it's important to look at losses that you take. I think you can learn more from them than you can from wins. Um, I think trade reviews are important for any kind of trade, but I've been doing these for the last couple trades I've taken, so I thought we would run it back. So in the last couple weeks, I have only taken three trades. We had the two longs on Ethereum. I don't even remember where it was. I think it was, I think it was this move and then something else. I don't know, it was a while ago. That's a little more than two weeks actually. Maybe it was this. I think it was this and then this leg. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. How long ago is that, five days? I'm not sure. Whatever. I could go back and check on my Twitter, but we don't have time for that. Still want to keep this relatively short. Don't want to waste any of you guys' time, but trade reviews of a loss might uh, end up being a little longer of a video than a win. So the trade that I took was this setup right here. My entry ended up being a little higher. It was about a 1.7 R trade. This doesn't look like anything fancy, but I kind of live in that one to two R, sometimes like 2.5 R um, range of trades. And if that's a new concept to you, just the whole risk to reward and how to manage your risk and all that, I have a risk management video that I made a little while back. If you just search Trader Cause risk management, on YouTube, it should pop up. I can actually put that down below in the description as well to make it a little easier. And also, while I'm on the topic, if you guys enjoy the videos, a Bybit link when also, will also be in the description. They are the sponsor of the video. So shout out to them. Um, but this is the trade I took. Um, the plans that I posted earlier today were that I was looking at this range right here. Um, either a sweep of the high to get short, sweep of the low to get long. It happened so that the sweep of the low was into, there we go. The sweep of the low was into four hour demand. The move or the, the down move that led to this impulse. Um, so that is a area of interest for me in the same way that this is. And that worked out pretty well. This is, that one got spiked through a little bit. For this, I probably would have been watching down here. That one got front ran, and we haven't touched this one yet. But these are basically origins of the move, the initial or the last bit of selling before the buyers took over. So we know that that is an area where there is demand from the buyers which is one of the main concepts that I trade with. Um, so this, this trade setup, although it didn't play out, it met my criteria um, of a valid setup. I wasn't looking for any type of massive reversal here, right? I think whether this is bullish or bearish, however you wanna look at it, I was given a range setup here to play. I took it, my target was 23,750 about a 2.4% move, nothing nothing insane. Um, and it didn't work out, right? We got stopped out. And that's gonna happen. Um, if that never happened, you know, I probably, I, w I mean, if you never lose, you're gonna be very, <laughs> you'll be better than Warren Buffett if you never took losses. But, um, so stopped out. What could I have done better next time? Um, I think in this case, so sometimes when I'm looking at a demand level, I think you can put your stop loss below the wick or sometimes after the end of the body. In this case, 
I mean, you could have put it here, but I probably wouldn't have taken that trade because that would have been like 0.8R, and I just don't think that really would have been worth it. Um, so with this setup, in this scenario, could have just sat out. The time of the day was not um, a normal time that I take trades. It was right after the daily close. I usually prefer to sit out a little bit after the daily close, so maybe I will start to implement that again. Um, but that's all data that I try and collect when I take a trade and use that to help me in the future. So um, I'll try to take it a little slower during the Asian session and maybe, well, also another thing I could have done was look for some more confirmation on a lower time frame, right? Because we put in this low and then this high I could have waited to see if we put in a higher low and then broke that high, then we would have had a lower time frame break in structure and then I could have had a bit more confidence in the setup. So could have done something like that too. One of the one of the things I struggled with a little bit this week was that I missed my initial plan. So if you watched my video from Monday right after the daily close, I wanted to see a spike above this level right into the weekly open to get short targeting. I think I said 23 K. So right around here. And unfortunately I was asleep for that. And sometimes when I miss a setup, I get a little antsy to get into the next one. Um, because if I was in this, I probably would have taken some off here and would have waited, waited, maybe taken a little bit more off after seeing that sweep. And then this would have broken down and this week would have looked a bit differently instead of having one trade that was stopped out i would have nailed this entire move so um i think not maybe not rushing into something after you miss your initial setup could be a good rule to uh, implement um, but that is something i've struggled with a bit in my trading i think um, when I like did the analysis right, I had the right idea, um, but missed the actual setup, then I'm like, all right, well, now I just wanna get into something else because I should have made money on this one, so I'm gonna try and get in something else and maybe I look for a reversal sooner than I would have if I was just still in this short from up here. So um, I'm not sure if you would necessarily consider that revenge trading, but whatever you wanna call it, rushing into something after the first setup didn't play out. I'm not sure, but that's something I have kind of noticed with myself. And I think some of this reflection can be helpful for trading in the future. You know, like even me just like talking through it on a video kind of gives me even more of an idea of like, yeah, no, that's a good idea. I probably should start doing that or doing this or whatever. So. Um, that is kind of a, re a, a review of what happened. And now let's look a little bit at where we could go forward from here. So this doesn't look great. Right. We're coming close to retesting the range high here, but it looks like we've kind of had this uptrend that's almost broken a little bit. I mean, if we put this on a line chart, it probably looks a little more clear, right? That looks relatively straightforward to me. So if this is gonna continue to push, I'd like to see a recovery sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I think we're looking at some more ranging or some more downside. Because, I mean, this, it was kind of ranging upwards, right? But there was, there weren't many impulsive moves. Um, and now that this is starting to break down, we could get a more like steady range for a little while. I'm not really gonna try and predict it because no one really can predict it. I mean, you can guess, but the way I look at trading is it's mostly if then scenarios and we look for things to play out and react accordingly. So. What I'd be looking for going forward, 
let's look at Ethereum really quick. So Ethereum did have a really good move up. I would call that quite the impulse, right? 2x off the lows. Yeah, even more than that, 131%. And we are above this key level. This strong support, strong support, resistance on the first test broke through. I would absolutely love to see us just range above this level, hold this as support, maybe chop out people who try and either short this thinking it's gonna completely break down or long it thinking it's just going straight back up, range around here for a while, and then later on make that push up to 2.5K. Would kind of be my ideal scenario. Um, but I think from a higher time frame perspective, I don't want to get too bearish until we break below this level. But if Ethereum does break below that, this would look pretty rough. And I would be expecting a move down to 1200. And I think that could be, I'm still having trouble with the undo button. I used to use that all the time to kill my drawings and now they changed it. Um, but if you have like a spot bag of Ethereum that you trade, at least me personally, you do whatever you want. If we break down below here, retest it, I would probably trim some, trim some off and look to buy some around the 1200s that would be invalidated if this got back above. For most people, I don't think it's a good idea to trade spot very much. I mean, I have long-term spot that I don't touch because I'm like, I don't want to fumble this no matter what. Um, because the worst case scenario is crypto plays out the way you expect it to and you fumbled the bag. So I'm trying to keep myself away from that. And that's why I think long-term spot is really important, but I think you can have smaller portions that you do try to trade. If you're relatively experienced with that, I would just dive right into it. But so as long as we hold that level, I think things look okay on Ethereum. Um, this is a pretty nice daily level here that I'm gonna draw and delete because it pretty much overlays the other one. But that's an area to keep an eye on. I don't really have any actionable setups that I'm looking for right now. I guess if Bitcoin does come up and take out these highs that they left, retest Monday's low, I think that could be a good short. But for now, I know I said this was a market outlook and trade review, but my market outlook is more of a uh, sit back and wait. So that might not be the most helpful thing, but in my opinion, no position is a position in and of itself. So we just have to wait and see what happens. Equities don't look great to me. I think this does look kind of topped out, maybe pushes up again to sweep these highs. Um, but we did have this little gap right here with these equal highs. We just swept those um, and it doesn't look awesome. But this just shows how much, how much more equities bounced than crypto. Like, I mean, you can look at this and say, oh, it was only 18%, 19% compared to Ethereum's 130%. But I think the important part is the structure of it, right? So this retested basically the low from April 18th before breaking down like that last little bounce. If we look at where that is on Ethereum, that'd be this, right? So it'd be retesting this portion of PA, basically this. We did not get anywhere close to that. And Bitcoin, you don't even wanna know. That's like 37K. And so the weakness that equities, or sorry, that crypto has shown throughout this bounce is a little bit worrisome, right? Because it's like, all right, well, if this really starts to roll over, then crypto is gonna also roll over and this is a lot closer to the lows than equities are. So that'll be something else to keep an eye out for. Um, right now, my main plan, like I kind of said before, wait and see what we get. Um, 
take it a day at a time don't try and over trade don't try and revenge trade learn from your losses and uh keep getting better keep improving so i think that's going to do it sorry this one went a little longer than usual as always shout out to the sponsors bybit if you guys enjoy these videos feel free to check them out with that link below that lets them know that it's worth it to have me continue doing these so appreciate your guys time i'll keep you posted on twitter if i take any other setups and i'll talk to you in the next video peace